Fizzbuzz, the easiest and hardest, simplest problem ever. The goal of Fizzbuzz is to print numbers 1 through 100 unless the number is divisible by 3. Then instead you'll print Fizz. If it's divisible by 5, instead you'll print Buzz. And of course, if it's evenly divisible by both, you'll print Fizz and Buzz. The thing with this question is, as with most code challenges that seem completely simple, there's some deception hidden there. For one, the first thing is the ordering of the tasks here. Um, but before we get into that, let's just break it down. The best thing to do with anything like this and stuff especially more complicated is to break it down into the simplest parts possible. So breaking it down, the first thing we need to do is pretty much print all of the numbers between and including 1 through 100. So I'll switch over to my little template I've started here. And since we know that this is a finite loop of 1 through 100, we're going to use a for loop as opposed to maybe a while loop, which is better for more infinite pur purposes like getting correct user input and whatnot. So for, uh, we'll do an integer iterator started at 1, not 0, because it's 1 through 100. And this integer needs to remain below or equal to, less than or equal to 100. And each time through the loop, we'll increment it by 1. OK, so that should solve. Let's go ahead and actually tell it to print system. Oop. System dot out dot print. OK, we'll save this. And we'll jump over here, compile it. Fizz, buzz .java. No errors, that's good. And we'll go ahead and run it. And we can see all the numbers 1 through 100 printed out. So that's the first step, right? That's good. Now, of course, we need to replace any numbers of 3, divisible by 3, with, um, with fizz as per our instructions right here. So we'll jump back over here, and right before it gets a chance to print, we'll say, uh, oops, if I, it, I divided the remainder of I divided by 3, I mod 3 is equal to 0, then that means that there's a 0 remainder left when dividing our current number by 3. And in such case, we'll print Fizz. Then we jump back over and run it, or compile it first, and then run it. And we can see Fizz has been printed. But there's a problem here. We're also still printing 3 and uh, 9 and numbers like that. As per the instructions, um, it's unless the number is th evenly divisible by one of these numbers. So we should not be printing 3. So what we'll come over here, easy fix, we'll just add an else statement there. And that means, of course, if the condition, the immediately preceding condition is not true in the if statement, then it will run the else. So save, jump over, compile that, run it. And scroll back up and check it out. We have one, two, fizz, four, five, fizz. Because the six, seven, eight, nine is fizz. So that's looking good so far. Everything's all fine and dandy, just like our logic so far. So then we need to go ahead and uh, just like it says over here, if the number is evenly divisible by five, print buzz. OK, no sweat. If i is evenly divisible by five. Save that. 
jump back over, compile it, run it. All right, let's check it out. One, two, fizz, three, four, buzz, fizz. Okay, it's printing. It's not. It's doing the right thing for five. Let's go down to fifteen. Fizz and buzz. Hmm. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, so the else statement is only tying to this immediately preceding if statement. So maybe we should throw in another else right here. Let's try this out. And what's obviously going wrong right here is we're already overthinking the problem. So we're, we're going to start running into back and forth little problems. Okay, one, two, three, fizz, that's good. Four, buzz, fizz. Wait, buzz. Five is that, yeah. Wait, why is fizz there? Buzz, five. Five should be buzz. Okay, then six is fizz, that makes sense. Nine is fizz, that makes sense. Ten is buzz, that's all good. Let's go down to fifteen. Only fizz. That should be fizz and buzz. What happened there? Okay, else if. Okay, it's elsing out, so. We could go back and do that again, but that didn't work. So now we're hitting the the wall here, so to speak. Like, what's going on? Where none of this logic is working. Do we want to create some big, giant, complex if-else statement? And here's the trick. What's going on is at first they ask you all of the stuff, basically in the opposite order to throw you off. So it's like, okay, yeah, I, just like we were going through it one by one, it all makes sense, right? But what you got to do is flip this on its head and realize that you are going to have to duplicate the test in the simplest situation. So what we need to do is come down here and say, put in this clause that's actually missing. If, let's go ahead and copy this one, control C, and then I'll go in and add the duplicate so i is also divisible by 5 then system out print fizz buzz so what we have here is a scenario where it's divisible by both print fizz buzz else if it's divisible by just 3 print that and else if it's divisible by just 5 print buzz and otherwise, if none of those cases are satisfied, go ahead and print the number. So let's save that and check it out. And as you can see, fizz is print instead of three, buzz instead of five, fizz instead of six, fizz instead of nine, buzz instead of 10, fizz instead of 12, fizz buzz for 15, it's looking good. We go all the way down to 100 divisible by 5. We got the buzz. 99 divisible by 3. We got the fizz. 90 divisible by 3 and 5 fizz buzz. It's looking good. So if we go back over there and look at it, what we did is we took these instructions, numbers evenly divisible by 3 and 5, we put that on the top. We could have left it on the bottom, but it's more efficient like this because it pretty much rules that out without doing this. Um, Actually, I was wrong about that even. <laughs> it, it needs to be on the top so that it um, breaks out of this if clause if it's divisible by both and it doesn't run through these two scenarios again. So that's basically the simplest, most readable way to do it. And if you go to the wiki wiki web, one of the first wikis ever invented, You'll find this example created by Alex North. What it does is, in our example, um, we're we have a little bit of redundancy here because we're testing for even divisibility by three and by five, and then if that's not true, then we're testing for even divisibility by three, and if that's not true, then even divisibility by five. So, in the case that it falls through to one of these one or both of these next conditions it's testing for them and so there's that redundancy there which with large computations that might not 
be ideal. So over here he's showing a trade-off which sort of eliminates that redundancy at the cost of creating this temporary variable right here and it's a string variable. Um, our example has no temp variables. Everything's just basically a literal that disappears just about as quickly as it's created. Um, this one, this string's persistent for a moment so anyway it comes down here it's an, it starts out initializes as an empty string if our current number is divisible evenly by three then it will add fizz to that string otherwise it will return another just nothing you know basically an empty string but not a null a null would be an error so uh, then it comes down test the divisibility by five same deal it either returns buzz or it will return an empty string so if it's neither divisible by three or five it will just fall through and keep returning empty strings which amount to nothing when we get down here to the print command the print statement it tests if that string is not empty then go ahead and print it and otherwise go ahead and just print the number so what's going on right here is that you can still te use both of these tests combined because if you see if it's divisible by three it's going to add fizz and if it's divisible by five it's going to add buzz so it will be one the other or both with pretty much no redundancy there um, the the actual loop set up the same and everything so let's go ahead and check that one out in action so we'll compile and run it and we can see we have the same deal 99 divisible by 3 fizz 100 divisible by 5 buzz 93 and 5 fizz buzz come up here all of it's looking good 15 fizz buzz so that's an alternate solution and he went back and did even one better than that on one hand because this one right here basically um, this doesn't create a string but it is more efficient than our original one. So it kind of knocks off a little bit off of each one and does it slightly more efficiently. So what's going on here is it's pretty much all the same you get into here except for this initialization at zero instead of one and testing for below but not equal to 100. So you're still gonna go through 100 iterations but the trickery here is that on the the post condition of the loop where you'll want to increment your variable you can see there's a comma so it's going to increment the variable i and then it's going to attempt to print it so by starting at zero the first time through the loop it's going to go through the loop and then when it's just about to return to the very beginning it's going to increment i and then it's going to run this print statement right here and it's going to say if it's evenly divisible by three or evenly divisible by five then check if it's just evenly divisible by three go ahead and print fizz if so otherwise nothing and uh, also append to it if it's evenly divisible by five buzz otherwise a blank string otherwise just print the number so it's actually probably most like this one except without the temporary string. You're just taking these two strings and doing a little bit of syntax trickery to append them together. You're basically creating this um, either the fizz literal or this blank empty literal and then you're appending that to this buzz or uh, this one here or this blank or you're returning it. And then notice of course that or condition will short circuit. That's the one little optimization that's that we're getting out of this over our first example is that if it's divisible by three instead of testing for both three and five it's just going to do three and short circuit into this. But um, if it's only divisible by five then it will run both conditions before it drops into here. So that's the minor optimization but as you can see this one's way more readable. So is this one they're basically just a this one would be a um, the computational the runtime complexity is what's sort of increased here because we're we have a little bit of a redundant calculation going on and this one would be the space complexity because we're creating that 
temporary variable but we're not duplicating any we're not doing any redundant calculation here this one's a trade-off between the two doing possibly a little bit of redundant calculation or for sure a little bit of redundant calculation but um, possibly less but at the expense of readability so this third case scenario would be don't use it unless profile profiling justifies it and even then you'd want to hide the implementation behind like some method call or something because this would just take too long for somebody to stare at and kind of figure out what's going on and you don't want to slap a comment on it because if something changes that comment could easily become out of sync so stick it behind a method name that that tells what action it performs and forget about it and short of that if the profiling doesn't justify it stick to one of these two readable options whichever one you prefer unless you're in a situation where you know you just you're doing such large calculations you can't afford that redundant uh, runtime complexity then you'll want to go with this one where your trade-off is you're gonna have a little bit more complexity in your space usage again and of course this one if space is tight and you can afford that extra calculation go ahead and stick to this one and that does it for fizz buzz